Hey there, John Morris here, and in this video we're going to talk about PHP includes and requires. So we're going to be talking specifically about four functions. Include, include once, require, and require once, and what the similarities and differences are, and when and where and how and why you might want to use these different files. So we'll start off with include, and what include allows you to do is it allows you to take another uh, PHP file and include it into uh, the current file that you're working with. So, for example, let's take our demo.php page. Let's say we take a, a new page here and we create an include. That includes our demo.php file. And we'll just call this include.php. Okay. So now if we come over to our site here and we go to include.php, and we go to that file, you notice that we get the <laughs> exact same thing here. Okay. And the reason is, is because we're including our demo.php file into this file. So it's just gonna give us the exact same thing. Now, if we were to come up here and we were to write something like all right, so that's outside of our include now. You can see it'll go ahead and it'll print this down there at the bottom, and that's different from now our demo.php file which doesn't have that okay so that's what an include allows you to do it allows you to take a another file and include it into your scripts now when might you want to use this well the most common place is if you're writing a script and let's say you have a configuration file where you store maybe you know username and logins for something or a good example is working with MySQL you may store your database details in a config file for like for example WordPress does then you would include that file in your script and what it would do is it would give you access to the variables or the constants that you've created with that config page so let's go ahead and actually just open up WP config here and You'll notice that we have this define database name, WordPress, user root, password, uh, host, localhost, etc. So we have all these definitions here, and what we're doing is we're defining PHP constants. And we'll talk about those just a little bit later. But what those are, or they're kind of like variables, but they'll they'll be used throughout your script. And so if we take this file and we include it into um, our include.php page or any page will have access to these con constants or any variables that are set throughout here. So we'll be able to then uh, echo out or use these constants and variables in this, this file here. So that's a good example of how you might use an include file. Another way you might use it is you may create a script that does a conditional check. And let's say if one condition is met, it will include uh, one file, and if another condition is met, it will include another file, and then you'll create those two separate files by themselves, and it'll allow you to keep things a little bit uh, more organized. So that's um, how you would use an include. And there's, of course, all a number of different ways that you can get creative with, um, with using includes. Now, includes are very similar to what are called uh, require okay so we can come in here and we can change this to require and go back to our include.php file and we're gonna get the exact same thing so you might be wondering okay what's the difference between include and require and the difference is, is how it handles if the page doesn't exist so let's go back to include and we're going to change this to demos.php because that's a file that doesn't exist. And let's refresh this. With an include, you're going to get a warning that the included file 
doesn't exist. But the rest of the PHP script or the rest of that page is going to execute. You'll notice we have this. This is an include file here still as well. Okay, so that's how it works with an include. If we come over here and we change this to require, and we come back, now you're going to get a fatal error, and the script is going to die, and that it'll stop executing at that point. And you'll notice that this, this is an include file that we had here is no longer there. So that's the difference between an include and a require. So if you have a, uh, a file that you absolutely need to be a part of your script, for example, a config file, you would want to use require. If it's something that you can still execute the script without, then you might choose to use uh, an include. I'll tell you that most of the scripts that I work with, I use require. And I actually use uh, something we're going to talk about here in a second called require once. Um, however, in your you know special case, you may have instances where that's not, not the case, but that's the difference. Um, you're just going to get a warning with an include, but the script will continue to execute, whereas with require, it will stop immediately right there and you're going to get a fatal error. All right, so now you might be wondering, okay, I understand the difference between include and require. What is the include once and require once? Well, let's come back over and let's go to our script and let's change this back to demo.php and let's do this. Let's include it twice and go back to our page and let's go ahead and refresh this. And what you'll see has happened is we actually have that file included twice in our script here. Now, you might be wondering, okay, well, I would never go in and put include twice. Well, when you're writing a script, uh, you may have instances where you include a file into one, you need, let's say your config file, you include it into uh, one part of your script and then you include it into another part of your script and then you have a main file that brings everything together and you include it in there as well along with the other two files and when you start including you have includes upon includes upon includes what will happen is it's going to pull in that config file all of these different times and so you're going to have all this excess code in your script and it's going to be really messy and it's going to slow down your script because PHP has to always go through all of this uh, script here. So now if we come back over to our uh, script here and we change this to include once and we come back over you'll notice that now that second include is gone and that's because include once will only include it one time. If it's already included it won't include it again. So that's really really handy Essentially what you can do is you can come in and you can include all of your different files and use include once and when you bring them together PHP will recognize that the file has already been included and it won't include it again and it will uh, keep your code from, from being, getting bloated by having too, many, uh, of this, too much of the same file included. So, and then of course you can do the same thing with require if you have require in here and you come in and you do a require once and you save that and we come back you notice we get it one time okay so that's the difference between include and require and you know include versus include once and require versus require once um, that's how they all work together again most of the time I use require once because most of the files that I'm using to bring a script together, I need all of them in there. I'm, I can't do without without one, and um, I only need them one time to be available. So, and I don't want to have them repeat and blow up the code, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, that's the main difference between include, include once, require, and require once. Hopefully, that's helpful for you, and I'll talk to you again soon.